Welcome to another fabulous, fantastic, and of course, epic episode of My Orgasmic Life. I'm your hostess, Gaia Morissette. And today I want to do a little bit of content warning before we get into today's conversation. So I'm going to be talking about BDSM, kink, uh, orgasm, sex, some graphic experiences uh, that my own sexual experiences. So if you're like, ooh, this might be too intense for me, please do what you need to do to take care of yourself, as always. And if you want more education or understanding or support or healing, please visit the hub of all things Gaia at uh, GaiaMorissette.com. Okay, let's get into it. Yay! All right, so for everybody who doesn't know or haven't heard, um, over the holiday season, uh, as I like to call it, Slutty Xmas 2021, I explored eight new exploratory sexual explorations. And what I found is, is that each one of those things that I explored, I was going to make into a show. So today we're going to do my adventures and understanding and exploring orgasm denial and orgasm control. All right. And if you're like, why would anybody want that? <laughs> That's exactly how I felt. I was like, well, before I was like, why would anybody do that? Why would anybody do that? So um, I'm going to share a little bit about my, my experience with it, and then we'll go into some of the nuances um, in relation to, and again, this is in relation to power exchange, BDSM relationship dynamics, okay, in a play scene, a sex media within that confines. Not we're, we're not talking about, you know, average sexual relationships when I'm talking about orgasm denial and orgasm control. I'm talking about consensual power exchange in under the guise of kink and BDSM. Okay, so my master, yes, I have a master. And for everybody who's like, what does that mean? Um, so I am a dom. I'm a pro dom. I'm a, a you know a femme dom. I'm a dominatrix. Um, but I have one person in the world who is my master, who gets the beautiful luxury of controlling my ass. <laughs> And he's worked really hard to get that position. <laughs> and he's probably the only person on the planet that would ever be able to dominate me. So I just need to clarify that piece, okay? So when I talk about my master, it's a really beautiful, sacred relationship that I have with him. And it's filled with love and respect and consent and all these beautiful things, okay? Um, but that doesn't mean anybody else gets to on me. I kind of dominate the rest of the world. <laughs> That's how that rolls. That works. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, um, my master says to me, "All right," and he calls me pet. He's like, "All right, pet. Uh, we're going to do you. One of the things we're going to explore is orgasm denial." And I'm all like, "What? No! <laughs> That's like the worst thing ever." nothing about that sounds like good time and the reason behind that is that I'm the opposite I am a um, goddess orgasmic goddess seeking ninja where every moment of every day I'm seeking out pleasure to have to lead to enough pleasure to lead to an orgasmic release that's how I move that's how I move in every moment and every day and in order to like control my orgasms or to try to deny my orgasm is going to be really challenging because basically there's like a three, not even a three second window between pleasure sensation to orgasmic release for me. So um, he's like, yes, so we're going to explore this because it's going to be difficult and uncomfortable for you. <laughs> and you're the one that said you wanted to explore for your audience. So guess you should have made a better life choice <laughs> so uh 
anyways, so I'm like, all right, let's do this. So what he did though was really important. And so I'm gonna talk about how he did this. And in relation to that, um, I want you to kind of pay attention for everybody who's looking at learning how to do this, that each little stage of it, he set the stage, he planted the seed, which is really important when we're doing orgasm denial or and orgasm control. Often we can use orgasm denial to train a submissive so that we can control their orgasms. And why do we want to control their orgasms? Well, it's just another layer of control, another layer of power exchange. And so, you know, in the, the space of orgasm denial can be the gateway to the training for orgasm control. And before I go into the rest of, like to actually go into the story, I, I think it's really important to understand that when somebody is submissive and there's a power exchange in that submission, a big piece of the craving, the desire, the need that's like be, needs to be filled within the submissive is this sense of being controlled, of being able to meet a goal, to satisfy and to, you know, to satisfy the dom, um, the master, the mistress would, you know, there's many different names, but, you know, the dom in that situation. And, and so orgasm control and orgasm denial is the ultimate because basically the dominant holds the submissive's pleasure in the palm of their hand, sometimes literally, sometimes figuratively. And that pleasure that they hold in their hand, we, it gets wielded out from a beautiful place of, um, you know, reward, uh, pleasure, uh, pleasing, doing a good job, um, you know, so it's, it's a beautiful gift. Okay. So, so if you're like, well, why would anybody want to do this? This is, this is why this is, this is the core of why this exists and why this is arousing and why this is turning people on. The other thing is, is that if the dynamic around, um, you know, begging, for example, is a, an, an arousal response for both parties. So you have the, the dom who really enjoys the power of having their submissive have to beg um, for something. And the submissive really gains pleasure from begging. And you can gain pleasure from begging for many different reasons and different levels. So for example, um, I personally hate begging. It's very uncomfortable, um, but it's, and it's very humiliating, but here's the kicker. Humiliation is a huge arousal response in my body. And it's the conflict for me, the conflict between how dare you make me beg and, oh my God, I really want this so badly. So I'm going to do anything I can to get this thing. So it's this internal conflict that creates this incredibly juicy, uh, orgasmic, uh, amazing response within me, which often is why people desire humiliation play in their BDSM play, because it gives this conflict, internal conflict. You know, humiliation isn't just always about, you know, verbal humiliation or making people feel bad. It's about creating a space of conflict and we'll, we'll do a whole show on humiliation. All right. So back to, back to the origin, origin. I got sidetracked there for a second. All right. But we needed everybody to understand why people do what they do. Okay. So in my story around orgasm denial and orgasm control, um, being on the receiving end of it, there's like three different components to it. So the first one is a conversation that I had with my master about four days before this happened. And we were talking about begging and he's like, you're horrible at begging. And I'm like, I know I'm horrible at begging. I hate begging. He's like, yeah, but you just don't do it well. I'm like, I know, I don't really understand it. <laughs> and he's like, of course you don't understand it. No one has ever said no to you. <laughs> you always get what you want. 
which is true. I'm like, yeah, and that's a problem. Why I'm really good at, I'm really good at getting what I need and what my, and getting my needs met. He's like, yes, but even when you ask for something, you know, everybody's going to give it to you. So therefore you don't really beg. There's no desperation. You might say the words, but there's no actual desperation in it. And he's like, and in all fairness, he's like, I also support that because uh, the more you orgasm, the more aroused I am from your orgasm. So I don't want to deny you that I, either because then it denies my own self. He's like, so I've not allowed, I've allowed you to be a horrible beggar because it serves me. And I'm like, oh, okay, fair enough. I said, is there like begging porn? There's got to be some begging porn to teach me how to beg better because <laughs> I'm awful at it. So that was like, so he's, we had this conversation like four days before this happens. So he's like, okay, we're going to do orgasm denial. This is the exploration, one of the exploration things we're going to do. And I'm all like, oh God, no, can't happen, blah, blah, blah. And I, you know, was all whiny. And, and he's like, well, I guess you better made a life, better life choices. <laughs> Next time you won't promise so much. <laughs> you won't promise to deliver so much. He's like, but here's the thing. He's like, you are not allowed to turn off your arousal. Because that's usually what would happen is that anytime anybody's tried to, we've tried to explore orgasm control, um, basically where I'm being told when I can come and when I can't come, all I do, and I always lose the orgasm basically, because I'm like, fine, if I can't come, then I'll just turn off the arousal. Then I just won't be in that cummy orgasmic place. He's like, so you're not allowed to do that. He's like, I'm going to keep you at a heightened state all day long. And I'm like, no, I'm like, this is going to be so hard. Please, please, can we do it? Let's explore something else. He's like, nope. <laughs> and he did. He kept me on the cusp and I couldn't, and I wasn't allowed to orgasm again. Like I said earlier in the podcast in the show is that I'm incredibly orgasmic. Like it's like, uh, the wind blows and I can have an orgasm, nothing touching me. Um, so like have an orgasmic response. So to not actually go over the edge, but be in that state without going over the edge uh, was really, really, really challenging and also incredibly delicious, <laughs> and intoxicating and riot producing. So I basically was in that state for six hours and that was like crazy and intense. And every time my arousal response, my arousal levels started to drop, he would up the ante, do stimulation, do, you know, stimulation, direct stimulation of, you know, my genitals to have me do direct stimulation to the, my genitals to make me watch porn that would really turn me on. And through all of that, I was not allowed to have an orgasm. And so I remember standing in the kitchen and I'm just standing there and my heart's racing and my body is like doing all the things, all this is sweating, it's racing, my heart's racing, I'm breathy, I'm like, oh my God, I just need to come or I'm going to die. This is like this whole part of my whole existence one just, and I could have, if I had had permission in that moment, I could have just had an orgasm on the spot without stimulation, without anything. E easy peasy. But I didn't want to fail. First of all, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm all about, you know, performance and, and being, you know, a, a really, really good. Two, I don't like punishment. Um, I love wielding punishment, but I don't actually like being punished. That's not, it makes me very distressed actually. And I really wanted to do a good job because I really wanted to please my master. So I was like, okay, I'm not, I'm not going to do, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I'm not going to have an orgasm. You know, every part of my cell and my being is desires to have an orgasm in this moment. I'm like, I'm not going to, because I don't have permission. So the day continues, lots of stimulation happens. I'm all like, and so now I start to, now I'm starting to understand begging. <laughs> it's like the first time ever in my life. I'm like, oh, I'm starting to get it. So he's like, okay. So he, we're having oral sex and I'm giving him, uh, you know, this epic blow job. And he's like, 
and and I'm giving him this blowjob like it is my lifeline. Like if I ever want to have an orgasm again, I better give the best blowjob I've ever given in my life. And he he's like, you know, again, he's like, you know, praising me, good girl, stimulation. And again, through the orgasm, my whole being wants to come. Like I want to have an orgasm so badly. And it's taking everything in me to not have an orgasm. And I'm giving the best blowjob I've ever given in my life. And all I want is an orgasm. Please let me have an orgasm. And so now I'm like, please, master, please let me have an orgasm. He's like, no. And I'm like, <laughs> so He's like, okay, we're going to have intercourse. And I'm like, what? No, there's no way. I'm, there's no way. I'm not, I'm not going to be able to not come by not having an orgasm. Like, I'm not going to be able to not have an orgasm with you inside me. Like, there's no way. There's no way. So he slides his penis inside me. And as he's sliding his penis inside me, my whole body's just wanting, craving, screaming, desiring to come so badly. And he looks at me and he's like, do you want an orgasm, Pat? Just really calmly. And I'm like, yes, please, please, please. Yes, master, please. And he's like, what would you do for it? And in that moment, I have never, ever in my life meant this statement more than I did when I said I would do anything. And I meant it. I would have done anything in that moment to have an orgasm. He had complete, utter, every part of me under control. And I would do anything for that. And I fully in that moment truly understood begging. And he's like, and he, he clearly saw that, felt that. And then he put a pillow over my head for a little bit of breath play and said, come pet. And I have never come so intensely, so hard in my life. So then this really interesting thing started to happen. I wanted his permission every time I started having an orgasm after that. So every time I would go to want to have an orgasm, I would say, master, may I have an orgasm, please? And he's like, you can have as many orgasms as you want. You don't have to ask me, Pat. But I couldn't help it. It was like every part of me was like, oh, we better ask. We better ask. We don't want to, like, we just want a better, we, we need to ask. We have to ask. And we couldn't help, I couldn't help it. I couldn't help it. I had to ask him because I didn't want him to ever take it away again, ever, 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 ever. <laughs> and so, What's been interesting since this play session, since this exploration, there is a part of me every time we have sexual interactions that I either do ask or I want to ask to have an orgasm. And when he says yes, that orgasm is so incredibly more powerful than my regular orgasms in a sense, because it's like I got pleasure from pleasing him of getting his permission. And so this is a very fascinating experience for me because as I said, I'm, I'm an alpha, I'm, I'm a dom, I'm, you know, I dominate the world. Um, so, and, you know, I'm a feminist and I'm all about, you know, being empowered and female empowerment. And so this idea that, I want to ask somebody's permission for my own sexual gratification or my own pleasure is incredibly um, fascinating because it goes against a lot of the my, 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 my original mindsets and ideologies about this. But see, the beautiful thing that I'm learning is that it's this beautiful gift of connection and surrender and intimacy that I'm gifting. I don't need him to give me permission to really have my sexuality. 
my sexuality, part of my sexuality, a big part of my sexuality is to surrender and let go of control because I'm always in control. So my biggest arousal responses are when I don't, when I am not in control. And so this is really, really beautiful. And it's a beautiful exchange and it's healing and it's profound and it's all these things. So I needed to just take a moment to talk about that because I know that others may struggle with the fact that you crave and desire to have somebody else control aspects of yourself. Um, and you may feel like you're a weirdo or a freak or it's unhealthy or it's dysfunctional or it's codependent or all these belief systems that when we don't understand about the importance of letting go and surrendering and letting go of exchange, you, you know, control. The only thing I think that it can be unhealthy and dysfunctional is if, the relationship isn't based on respect and love and equality and safety, and then it can potentially be problematic. But if it is based on respect and love and equality and, um, you know, doing no harm to, you know, to yourself or others, then it can be amazing and incredible. So, this is a beautiful, beautiful way. Again, so we got three stages. We have the begging stage, as you saw in the story. Then we had the, you know, uh, piece around, you know, the orgasm denial, which then brought me to the begging, which brought me to him now, you know, him being able to control my orgasms. So now let's fast forward a little bit. He not only, I ask for permission often to have an orgasm because it brings me joy to do so, not because see, I have to, but because I want to. And he can just come up behind me, whisper in my ear, come pet. And he doesn't even have to do anything. And I will come on demand. He can say, come pet across the room. And I come on demand. And that ability, both is part of the power exchange, the ability that he gets to command my orgasms from a distance is very intoxicating from a Dom perspective, because I also have trained my pet the same way. So it's incredibly intoxicating to say, come, come pet, good girl. And all of a sudden, bam, she has an orgasm. She can't help it. She, 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 she's, so tuned into pleasing me, wanting to please me, wanting to serve me, wanting to the, the and also my voice that she can't help herself. Even if she wanted to help herself, she couldn't help herself. <laughs> and I understand that because I, I'm on both ends of the spectrum. I'm on the receiving end of that for my master. And as a dom, I do that with my pet, but I also have that ability to do that with other people that I dom. So it's, Orgasm denial is a beautiful gateway to power exchange, and it's a beautiful gateway to surrendering, and it's a beautiful gateway to uh, really letting go. So that's what I have to say about orgasm denial and control. I hope you enjoyed today's episode on my orgasmic life. And uh, you got a little bit of tingles and excitement and be like, oh, you know what? Maybe I want to explore this. <laughs> Something to be said. There's a bunch of things in this place. So a couple of different housekeeping things. One, you want to spend time with me, hire me. So first of all, when I say you want to spend time with me, I only mean a professional capacity. Okay. I'm not available for sex, marriage, having anybody's babies. Um, I only mean in professional capacity. So hiring me for, you know, exploration from a Dom perspective um, or hiring me in a coaching perspective or facilitation. So hiring me in a professional capacity of support. So the best way to enter the world of all things Gaia is visit GaiaMorissette.com. And from there, you can be brought to the world of BDSM, to trauma healing, to sexual wellness, to all of my online courses and educations, uh, of course, my podcast, my orgasmic life, and all the other places that I show up in the world, okay? 
And don't forget to support me and you so that I can continue to create beautiful content for you to show up, to tell you my stories, to inspire by going and visiting and supporting my Patreon account. For as little as $5 a month, you can support me, what I do in the world. And you also get really amazing bonus content that only my Patreon people get from me. So like I would probably have something like, you know, the step-by-step how to's. That's what happens in the bonus content. And the last thing is, is that I don't know if you know this, but actually there's two things I don't know if you know, which is the first one is that I have a BDSM membership program where I take each kink that I talk about and I do live demonstrations, pre-recorded live demonstrations. I do education and then we do a live demonstration so you can see the, me in action in all of my glory, sometimes naked, <laughs> most of the time wearing a corset and sexy outfits, uh, actually utilizing and exploring that kink in actual playtime. And so if you're like, ooh, that sounds super sexy and incredibly educational all at the same time, because that's what I'm about, sexy education, <laughs> then go join my membership program. And you can find that at empressgaia.com. And don't forget to listen to My Orgasmic Life that can be found on all of your podcasting platforms like Spotify, I, iTunes, you know, all the places. Mm -hmm. have a kinky day may it be filled with exploration bye